Hi, my name is Ben Wynn. I'm a Year 6 teacher at St Anthony's Primary School in Wanneroo. And last year, I decided to run a technology and enterprise project with my Year 6 class where we designed and created video games. We entered their video games into the Australian STEM Video Game Challenge run by ACER. And much to everyone's surprise, one of my teams won. In fact, in the open category that we entered, uh, four of the top six teams were from my class, which was pretty, uh, pretty amazing for the kids, pretty amazing for me. Uh, the Australian STEM Video Game Challenge is a national competition, runs from year five all the way up to year 12, where students design and code, code their own playable video games in a number of different platforms. Last year we entered the open category. Uh, this year we're going to be jumping in and trying the scratch category with some students also interested in, in entering the open category using GameStar Mechanic, which uh, was the platform that my students used last year. Uh, in the past, I've tried to do coding and game design with students uh, when with classes, and I've had sort of middling success, I guess. Uh, what I found was the biggest difficulty was maintaining motivation. Coding's hard, it takes a long time to get a good pro product, and s students aren't always super interested in it, especially those that think they can't code or don't know how to code or, or coding's for you know certain types of students. So. Last year I approached it from a different point of view, from a different perspective. Um, we took it very much from a literacy perspective. We wrote games, uh, we wrote stories, sorry. And then we tried to turn our stories into a game um, by having the students write interesting stories, stories that they're excited about. First, it helped them have, um, I guess, more a sense of scale or scope for their game. They had something in mind that they were trying to convey. Uh, in the past, when I've done it, we've sort of just made games for the sake of make, making games with no real end target in mind, uh, no authentic goal, which ended up with students losing motivation and, and never really finishing them. Um, this time they had an authentic goal. They knew it was going to be entered into the competition. They knew everyone's game was going to be entered into the competition, regardless of you know, what stage they got to, they were going to have to submit something that was finished. So that helped them all maintain motivation to actually keep working through what is quite a long project. Um, and knowing that it was, they were going to be judged by actual industry professionals, that they were going to get actual feedback on their game from, I guess, uh, from a bigger source than just from me or their friends in the classroom. I think that sense of being part of something bigger, being part of something authentic and having an authentic goal uh, really helped to motivate them. So we're trying it again this year with the, with the year sixes. Last year I used GameStar Mechanic because I was somewhat familiar with it. This year we're going to try using Scratch and um, I'm going to give the kids a choice. We're spending a lot of time on Scratch getting to know Scratch right now and then I'm going to let them choose to use either Scratch or GameStar Mechanic, whichever one they feel more comfortable with. Um, yeah, last time well, last year, 2018, was the first time that the challenge has had an equal number of boys and girls in, in the winning teams, which is fantastic. Um, my team that won was a team of four girls, and they weren't the sort of kids that were traditionally that interested in coding. Uh, if I'd said, hey, I'm going to run a coding class, they, they weren't the kids that would have come. But they were able to get motivated. Um, they had lots of arguments, but they eventually got there in the end and they came up with a really, really good product that they're really proud of. And it's a product that's been motivating to, to this year's year sixes to see what just regular kids that were in their school were able to achieve. Um, my job isn't to do any coding. So I've done a little bit of playing with some of this software before, but I'm by no means an expert. My job is really to break the, the project down into manageable chunks. If I said, hey, we're going to make video games, off you go, it's, it's an overwhelming amount of work for students, but instead I break it down into manageable steps so that they never feel overwhelmed, they always have a direction, we check in often and make sure that, that they're on task and they're able to, to keep meeting, setting and meeting their goals. So there's a lot of good benefits for the students to participate in this challenge. Uh, there's the goal setting, there's 
group management, uh, there's you know, managing a, a project or a task that takes a lot of time, there's the coding itself and the game design, there's the whole design make appraise process where they need to be playtesting their games and, and continuing to improve them in that sort of iterative process. Um, I think I'm just about out of time for this video blog, but I will be back soon with another one. If you have any questions, leave them in comments and I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. Um, but as I say, I'm not an expert. I'm working it out as I go. So hopefully what me documenting this process will, will maybe demystify uh, a bit of game design or, or, or coding for other teachers out there who are keen to give it a go but maybe think they don't have the background for it. The kids will amaze you. Uh, a lot of what we work out my students work out, they show someone else, I show everyone, everyone gets excited. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, well, I'll see you for the next vlog.